Welcome to Walking the Earth. Today we are in Lumbini, Nepal's Mahayana monastic zone in the Lumbini Sacred Garden, which is connected to the complex where Siddhartha Gautama, Shakyamuni Buddha, attained or was born, and then 35 years later he attains enlightenment and then teaches until 80 before he passes away. Um, this is the, uh, the Korean Mahayana Monastery and Temple. And you can see some beautiful stylistic uh, flourishes within it. It's a bit faded and it's incomplete as so many of the monasteries and temples are here within this, this monastic complex. Um, but it's still, it's quite beautiful. And you can see the, the Chinese influences and you can see, uh, if I was more knowledgeable, I could explain some of the, the more unique aspects of of Korean Buddhism and architecture. It's quite beautiful. I would love to go and travel throughout South Korea and go to some of the sacred places. Um, I know that they're very, they, they've had a long um, and important Zen tradition and they, they were a great transmitter of Buddhism to Japan and then many teachings back into China. So quickly in China, um, China starts receiving Buddhist scriptures and teachings approximately 2,000 years ago. So it's coming in through the land routes of the Silk Road, um, coming from Bactria, what Muslims would know of as Khorasan, and from Punjab. So basically went from the Middle Lands up into Punjab and Kashmir, up into Bactria, up in Afghanistan region, and then comes across the Pamir Mountains and across the Taklamakan Desert through Khotan, through what is now Chinese Turkestan, and then continuing down the land route of the Silk Road. Finally, it makes it into Northern China. And then there's a long period of a giant translation movement where many ancient scriptures from India are being translated from uh, Central Asian languages and Sanskrit into Chinese, utilizing a lot of vocabulary from Taoism. So there's a big Taoist influence in certain, certain um, textual and spiritual traditions of China, particularly in the Chan tradition, which by the time it gets to Japan is Zen. So Buddhism is transmitted across the, the, the land Silk Road and then later on the sea routes of the Silk Road into China, including statuary with a, with a heavy Greek influence and paintings with a heavy Greek influence, which you can see within many of the beautiful Buddhist caves along the Silk Road path. Um, and, you know, out of Gandhara and etc. Um, so then in, I believe in the 300s, 400s, Buddhism is taking strong root in Korea. And then uh, within the next few hundred years, then it's transmitting into Japan. And they transmit a variety of schools of Buddhism, including um, the Agamas or Agamas, which are the, the, the original Tipitaka written in Sanskrit, which closely matches and mirrors and connects to the Pali Canon. So a lot of what we know about early Buddhism and the original 17, 18 schools of Buddhism comes from Chinese translations. So China preserved them, Korea preserved them, and Japan preserved them, uh, while, while the Pali scriptures were preserved down in Southeast Asia and in Sri Lanka. Um, so then besides the early schools transmitting and some of the early monastic transmissions, um, you know, so like the, the Theravada, they have one, one Vinaya, they have one monastic code, the, the, the rules for being a monk or a nun and, and the lineage transmissions. And then you have another, you have two more branches that have survived from the early schools. Mula Sarvastivadin, they wear the, the, the maroon robes. You see it within the Tibetan Vajrayana tradition. And then um, also the Dharma uh, Gupta or Guptaka, I, I forget exactly how it's pronounced, but that, that lineage is preserved in Japan and I believe in Korea. And this is how in the Theravada tradition, they have not had official uh, nuns for a long time because the lineage has died out. And so some are trying to revive the, the nun tradition through this, this Dharma Gupta Guptaka tradition. And um, um, so I believe Korea had preserved that one as well. Um, Korea also received the, uh, the original Abhidhamma school of, of mind sciences and, and mind philosophy and psychology. 
um, that is present within the early schools of Buddhism, and then also the Mahayana philosophy schools of Chittimatra or mind only of the Yogacara yoga school, as well as Madhyamika, the middle path tradition. They transmitted uh, the flower garland school to on to Japan. They transmitted Tiantai, which becomes Tendai. Um, they transmit, um, you know, the, the Shan tradition, which goes from Jhana in Pali, and in Sanskrit it's Dhyana. This means absorption, absorption, meditation, and then that trans, and then that tra becomes in Chan in China, and then by the time it gets to Japan, it's Zen. So what we know of is Zen is transmitted from China into Korea and then into Japan. And some of the Zen lineages actually have Korean connections. And so there are a lot of Korean connections in Japan. Um, and then many Korean teachers became very influential and important in China proper, which I will have to study that and discuss that more in the future. But I wanted to just share a little bit about the Mahayana Buddhism was very strong in Korea. It is less so now because in the north it, it, it went through a communist and an atheistic phase and many people are still in that, in, in that realm um, in North Korea um, in a totalitarian authoritarian regime where freedom of religion is not, not practiced as far as I'm aware. And then in South Korea where there is freedom of religion, many people are now um, practicing within the Western Christian traditions. So they've become evangelical Christians, Roman Catholics. Um, there are some syncretic um, groups like the Moonies. Um, and so it's, it's more Christian nowadays and they've definitely um, taken in a lot of influence from the various brotherhoods. And, but there are still serious practitioners of Buddhism, of Confucianism, and of traditional religions there like shamanism um, including the shamanistic cults that where the women become possessed um, I'm not as aware of this but it's 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 interesting um, so I would like to study more about Korean Buddhism in Korea and to learn particularly about the Zen tradition because that's very fascinating to me. Um, but there are other schools and expressions that develop there and then syntheses. There's a Korean synthesis school, I believe, that synthesized a number of the schools together. So we'll go ahead and draw this to a close. Um, if you know about some, some good resources to study about Korean Buddhism, um, please share those in the comments. Um, it's, it's fascinating and I would like to know more about that area of the world personally by going there and eating the food. I also know they preserved a very, they cultivated and preserved a strong vegetarian tradition in Korea as well as Japan. So we'll discuss that in the future. So until then, be happy and be peaceful.